In this video, we're going to be talking about Excalibur JS. It's a fantastic library for building awesome browser games. We're going to talk about the Excalibur library itself, and then I want to show you some cool demos I've made just by playing around with it. It's a great way to get started with game development in JavaScript. For context, I gave this presentation at a JavaScript meetup just last night, and I wanted to just take the time to do it again for my YouTube channel. Before we go, remember, if you like this kind of thing, please like and subscribe. That helps me keep making videos, so thanks a bunch. Let's get right to it. Now, Excalibur is an open source 2D HTML game engine, and you'd install it into your project just like anything else. Like if you're using NPM or you just want to load it in from a CDN, it's pretty flexible and easy to just pull into whatever project you're working on. So I've only discovered it recently and only been using it for a couple weeks, but I've had a blast making a few demos with it, and I'm going to show you those at the end of the talk too. So real quick, a little bit about me if we haven't met before. My name's Drew, and I have uh, one game out on Steam. It's called Danger Crew. We have more on the way too. But this game, Danger Crew, was written all in React. And at the very end of the project, we packaged it up with Electron because uh, that way we could distribute it as a standalone app and then put it on things like Steam. When we finished that project, I took a little tour around the world. I was like, wait, instead of just jumping into the next game using the same stack, like what am I missing by not reaching for a Unity or GameMaker or Godot or whatever? And so I spent the next couple months just making all kinds of stuff in all these different languages. And so at this point, I've used them all. I really like all of them. There are things I just love about every single one. But for some reason, my heart keeps coming back to JavaScript. JavaScript itself, of course, doesn't really give you much. It's just like, here's a blank page, do something with it. And so what I found with Excalibur is that it comes in and gives you a lot of the same patterns and features that you get with something like a Godot or a Unity. We're going to talk about those features in the coming slides too, but the point is it's like you have an idea for a game, you prefer to just stick with JavaScript because maybe you're pretty fluid with it, you like JavaScript, Excalibur is going to be this really great partner for building the game that you have in mind. For the record, all these other engines are fantastic, so you know if you prefer to use those, by all means, use them. But if you want to stick in the JavaScript camp, you have options. So let's talk about some of the things that Excalibur gives you. It comes with a really strong concept of an actor or a game object is a different way you can think about that. It'll give you 2D graphic support as well, a really nice camera system, sounds, gamepad support, those things are great. The big thing I think is physics. If you have a game idea in mind that involves maybe gravity or collisions, uh, you, you could try rolling your own physics, but there's a lot to get wrong with that. And it's like really complicated. You could burn a ton of time just worrying about physics when really you could just pull in something like Excalibur and get started quickly. The physics system that comes with Excalibur is really nice, really easy to use. And then finally, TypeScript support. If you're a big TypeScript fan, you're gonna love this. It makes it really easy to pick up because everything is typed so well. The autocomplete just kind of like takes care of itself. I was thinking about this too, that maybe if you haven't checked out TypeScript yet, but you're curious about it, Excalibur would be a really good way to learn it because everything in the library is so well typed, it could be a nice really kind of intro guide to what it's like to work with TypeScript. So might be worth checking out even just for that. So let's talk about the approach to actually building something with Excalibur. Say that we want to build out this scene. This is a screenshot from a video I did on my channel a long time ago. We need to break down everything that we see here into little individual entities, and those are called actors. I'm going to draw some boxes on the screen now. See, we have a character over here, maybe a coin that could be collected by the characters. Tables and chairs might occupy some physical space that the characters can't like barge through those. And then of course, maybe a pizza shop, like a building. Notice that all of these things have positions and they're kind of on the map in a certain spot and they have different sizes. So to create these individual actors in Excalibur, you simply extend the Excalibur actor class and then in the constructor here, you can pass in some basic position information. If you want this actor to opt into the physics system, you can tell it how big it is with like a bounding box. You can scale things up. And then finally, you can opt into different collision types too. Some examples of that might be, here's a floor and here's a character and the character can't like move the floor. The floor is always right there. Or maybe you have characters that could push each other. Like here's a block and I'm gonna come up and push the block away. Like you can do all that stuff just out of the box. Excalibur also has a more complicated realistic physics engine that you can opt into. It's a little bit more expensive performance wise, but like the library is so performant anyway, probably doesn't matter. But that would allow you to do things like realistic physics, where maybe you have like a block and things need to like realistically bounce off each other instead of just stopping at each other. Depending on what kind of game you want to make, you have options there too. Excalibur is running a game loop under the hood. And so that's a process that's going to be running code like constantly. During every frame of the game, each actor is going to be able to opt in 
into that game loop to do something. And so that's called your on pre-update. There's a couple different flavors of how you can hook into the game loop. But for example, on pre-update, you might have code that's like, hey, I'm holding an arrow key down. So this object should be moving because I'm holding the key down. It's a good spot for your frame by frame movement code to go. Excalibur also comes with a really strong event system. So say you have two actors and you want to know when they overlap, like this hero is going to collect this coin or something. You'll get a really nice clear callback when a collision or an overlap happens. And then you can, you know, do stuff during that callback, like destroy the coin and then uptick the score, that kind of thing. Now to tell Excalibur what each of these actors should look like, there's a really nice sprite sheet API. So you provide a sprite sheet for a given character. Say this is, let's just say it's called hero.png. There's a bunch of different frames in it, but it's all one image. You configure that image within Excalibur. So you tell it how many columns and rows we're dealing with, and then how big each sprite is, each frame is. From there, Excalibur will parse it and give you back indexes. So it can kind of tell you, like, this is frame 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it kind of like just goes down the list that way. You can take those indexes to construct sequences. So you have like your walking sequence. Here on the top row, we have like the walking down, the walking to the right. Maybe you have just a parked idle pose. It's just one frame. And then in your game loop code, you go in and tell Excalibur when to switch to which sequence. So if the character's moving, you might play that walking animation. If they stop moving, they switch over to the stand animation, that kind of thing. So this is really nice to work with. You just drop in your image, you configure it quickly, and then your animations are ready to go. One thing I appreciate about Excalibur specifically is that it's just here to do basically one thing, and that's to like draw all of your actors on the screen where they go doing the right thing. If you have a complicated menu system in mind, or you want to bring in some other libraries that you want to use too, it's totally okay with that. So say that you have some maybe complicated UI and you want to use React for that, you can use Re React right on top of Excalibur's canvas rendering and it's going to be fine. Uh, state management as well, if you have an idea on how you want to manage state throughout your whole app, kind of like you would you know, with a web app or something, Excalibur is going to fit right into that. So again, it's really here just to do its one drawing thing. It's very modular, very flexible. In using it, I've never felt like I'm locked in to doing it the Excalibur way only or that kind of thing. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and get to some demos. So I've got two demos to show you, and they're of two pretty different game styles. So our first demo is Mega Man. So here we have Mega Man on screen. He's an actor himself, and he's tied into physics code. So if I hold down the arrow keys, he'll walk in the direction I tell him to. He'll also switch to that running animation. And then anytime he's in the air, which you can jump by pressing the Z key, which like up shoots or down shoots his velocity like to, to a negative number to bring him upwards. Um, anytime he's in the air, he'll use the jumping pose. And so it's kind of declarative in that way where the code is like, hey, are you moving? Be running. Are you in the air? Make sure you're like in the jumping uh, frame. Now you can also shoot with the X key. And so when you do that, he's going to launch into that shooting frame, and then he'll start spawning little mini actors called bullets. And those are just, you know, they're just actors that have some velocity applied to them. So they're just going to go and search for something to collide with. I can keep walking here. And we'll see something to uh, attack. So you see Mega Man can take damage too. When he enters that damage state on collision, he has a velocity that pushes them backwards. He's kind of in that like frozen state for a bit. I'm going to go ahead and fight back here. Destroy this enemy. Nice, he's gone. Now I'll keep going. This game also has ladders in it, and these are like surprisingly hard to get right. Uh, get, no matter what engine you use, ladders and platformers are tricky. And so you basically you can overlap with the ladder and hit the up key, and that will put him into a climbing state. And when he's in the climbing state, he's opted out of gravity. So he won't fall up or down anymore. His Y axis position is completely controlled by the up or down arrow keys at this point. So I can keep climbing, uh, enter the top of the ladder. And then notice too, maybe you've already noticed, uh, a camera has been following him around. So the camera system is instructed to just lock to his X position only. So when he jumps, you don't see the camera moving up or down or anything like that. I've added some custom code to kind of lock the camera at the same Y position, but follow him on the X. And it's really easy to do. It just takes a couple lines of code. Um, however, when you get up to, say, the top of the map, you can tell that camera to say, hey, whatever your Y is, go ahead and move upwards. But don't just jump up there. Go ahead and like transition your way up there. And that's how some of these like room transition effects can be achieved. So now I'm in a different room. The room itself, in fact, is even a game object on its own. It has its own walls and floors and definitions and that kind of thing. 
Uh, finally, one more thing I'll do here with the Mega Man example. I've wired the space bar up to basically give him a ton of damage. And so when I do that, he enters the death state where basically Mega Man has been replaced with a different actor type. The actor type is called like hero death or something like that. It just spawns a bunch of orbs and then the level will restart after that. So the point here is to think really small and little modules, break everything that you see down into little components called actors. Now the next demo we have is a Zelda game in the style of Link's Awakening on Game Boy Color. Same concept here, where Link is a game actor and he can walk around, he's tied to the arrow keys again. This game is top down, so it doesn't involve gravity, uh, but he still has some collision uh, detection involved where say Link can't like barge through these walls up here. They know that they have certain like physical space and Link just can't pass through them. Link has some attacks too, like he can uh, shoot arrows and swing his sword in all the different directions. These, again, are just instances of new little actors that are spawning. And so if anything collides with this sword, it knows that like, oh, okay, an enemy has like been damaged by the sword. So let's go ahead and add an enemy to the screen. I've got this add moblin button, add an enemy. It kind of chases Link around and then you can kind of beat him up with the sword and then he'll explode when he you know, takes so much health. That's just a simple counter. It's like his HP is three, he gets hit by the sword, then it's two, then one, and then boom, he explodes. Again, enemy body gets replaced with a little explosion game actor object. But now the cool thing about this game is that it's not single player, it's actually multiplayer. So I've joined the game in another browser tab, and now we have two characters walking around. And I have to be honest, the, the networking part has nothing to do with Excalibur. That's a different library called PeerJS that basically creates a peer-to-peer -peer connection uh, among anybody that's connected to the website. So the real-time piece, not exactly an Excalibur thing, but Excalibur does make it really easy to update objects on the fly. So if a new uh, update comes in or that kind of thing, like you can just really quickly update all the game objects on screen to reflect whatever the network update uh, had for you. They also share information on like, okay, what kind of animation are you using? And all that stuff is reflected in sync. So we basically see the same thing. The other thing that's synced across the network is the state of the individual enemies on screen. So I can hit this add moblin button and just flood the room with moblins and it gets real chaotic. Uh, but the, the browsers are communicating with each other, like the position and what every moblin is doing and their priority. And so this is pretty cool. You can kind of just keep fighting. Making this kind of thing with Excalibur is a lot of fun. It looks like a lot's going on here, but it really only took me a couple days to get like the basics down. And so again, if you're interested in working on games as a front-end developer, I super encourage you to check out Excalibur. It's an awesome way to get started with game development. All of the code for both of these examples are linked below, as well as links to Excalibur and anything else that I mentioned here. Remember, please like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. There's also a Discord community of game developers linked below if you want to hang out with other game developers, share the project you want to make, get some help on it, that kind of thing. Hope to see you in there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.